shift gears to Regent Sports Desk, and our uh, well again the video will be up sometime tomorrow on YouTube. Uh, you uh, you can't wait. Listen live, hello folks. I'm worried by, but boy, do I talk about tough year for my black and gold teams? Griffith is one and five. Purdue is not going to win a game the rest of the year, and they got shellacked by Northern Illinois. And uh, the Steelers are zero and four and oh, looking pretty listless. When's the last time the Steelers were zero and four? Uh. I think they're saying, I think, Eight. before Chuck Knoll. Oh, jeez. In the 60s. So, uh, but your Chiefs are doing well. The Chiefs are doing well. Bears, well, they're going to be trying to recover. And uh, the Colts are doing halfway decent as well. Uh, before we begin, of course, don't forget the, the Regent Sports Desk part of the program. The views expressed are not necessarily that. A bit of America Broadcasting LLC. Our opinions are our own. El Poto, Joe, Joey, Joey Shades, and uh, Mr. Chiefs head over here is going to so have shady. Uh, we talked about this on MAB Weekly. I guess maybe we could talk about this, maybe at the answer before we talk about the picks. JT, I hate to interject on your show, but uh, roughly at this time a week ago, we were very unaware of the events that were transpiring in Laporte. With and the the on the or on the area. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, we want to send our condolences to the uh, family of uh, Jake West and the Laporte football community. Yeah, it was also great to see the outpouring of support. I know being at the Laporte Maryville game, it was incredible the amount of awards we saw and the way the folks at Maryville handled it. I know you guys were, I think, uh, at the Port of Chester game, they did uh, some things there. There was a lot of awards. It was great to see Northwest Indiana represent and come together. You know, we sometimes compete very hard against each other out of fields, and you guys played the game, but it is a big fraternity off of it, and when you see something like that happen, it hits everybody hard. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, the Indianapolis Colts gave the Laporte uh, head coach Coach of the Week. Bob Shelley. Yeah. Yeah, I got ditto to everything you guys have said. Uh, a lot of people out there have uh, been posting uh, videos, pictures uh, on my page. I, I appreciate all that, and... Uh, you know, I appreciate the, the whole, really the whole community, you know, area coming together uh, for this, um, and it's, it's going to be hard to move forward for, forward from it, but you know, we have to try to do the, the best we can, and, and hopefully um, in the future we never have to see anything like this happen again, because this is it's, it's a very sad situation. All right, week seven, we are now past the two-thirds mark of the season, believe it or not, gentlemen. Yeah, that's it, you know, time flies. I mean, it's uh, you know, I could. It almost seems like last week we were having our our uh, preseason show, making our state uh, finals predictions, and well, wow. some of them are looking good, some of them. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what 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 are you know twists and turns? Um, you, know, you you just never know what's going to happen. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's uh, maybe reflect a little bit on week six. Uh, some things that happened, uh, Bob. Talk about your game a little bit. Obviously, well, I know it. It was very emotional, obviously, as you can imagine. And, and uh, I, you know, Merrillville, to the for most part, I think they kind of scaled it back. But that being said, they still ran up a twenty-seven nothing halftime lead. They only threw five passes the entire game, so they kind of took care of business. And really, it was a DJ Wilkins getting the job done with his feet. He had a hand at all. Four first half touchdowns. He ran for three and threw for a fourth to uh, uh, Mr. Um, Tyree Fuller there. Uh, Laporte really put together a solid second half, scored a couple touchdowns in the second half, and really uh, it was that situation with the events of last week. The score didn't matter. It just didn't matter at all. And uh, again, everybody coming together in a very tough situation one week ago. Well, uh, you guys saw uh, Chester did last week against Portage and. Uh, Big Red Rising, I guess, is the story right now, huh? Oh, yeah, it was electrifying over there at the Warpath, JT. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah, uh, Hashim Simpson making his first uh, appearance, his, his first game of the season, and uh, really couldn't have come at a better time. You know, homecoming week, um, I think it really lit a fire under the, you know, uh, under their butts, uh, and, and Portage really just, just came out of terror, you know, from, from the first play of the ball game. You know, they, they have an impressive drive, go down, score a touchdown, and then um, they get a fumble on a backwards pass, punch it in. It's already 14 to nothing, and, and Chesterton, you know, couldn't even blink an eye. Um, it was just, it was almost a repeat of, of last week. It was almost like an upgrade from the Crown Point game. You know, they actually, I think, performed a little bit better. And, you know, they really executed in all three phases, even, you know, even kicked the field goal. Um, 
I really like where this Borders team is going. I, you know, if you would have told me three weeks ago that that they were going to dominate both Chesterton and Crown Point, I would have said there's no way it's going to happen. But uh, it's it's been a great a great turnaround, and and we'll, you know we'll see if they can uh, keep that going. But you know, I was very impressed with what I seen with Portage. Um, you know, a couple other games. I think um, you know the Lowell Hobart game. It was a great game. It came right down to the wire, and I mean I, I expected it to be close. I, I I always expect the game to be close. Every year it's the same story, one way or the other. You know, I know somebody thought you know somebody posted that they thought it was just going to be a big blowout win for Hobart, and I, and I said there's no way. It's 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 always going to be a close ball game. Um, Tough way to lose if you're Hobart. One point loss. Uh, they had their chances. Um, you know now they're four and two. We'll, we'll see what they learn from it this week. You know we'll see if they can uh, bounce back because they got they got another tough one with with, with Munster and Munster's been doing pretty well yeah, too. Yeah, they are one of the hottest teams right now in Northwest Indiana. By the way, uh, the two uh, two Northwest Crossroads Conference games. I've been America broadcasting this week myself. Britt Stamper will be at the Brickyard for that Munster Hobart game. You guys are going to be uh, at fifty nine fifty nine Broadway. As Andrea and host KV, we'll talk about those matchups later on. All right, let's start with our uh, our, our, our pick 'em list, and we're going to start uh, Boone Grove. They're five and one, had a nice win over Hamlin last week. They're traveling down to Indianapolis. They're going to take on Indianapolis Marshall, who's also five and one. It's going to be an interesting matchup of uh, uh, you know two programs that are rel relatively new on the scene and uh, have have been very impressive. You know, the first couple of seasons. Um, and, and really both teams do have a common opponent, which is Bowman, uh, and both teams beat Bowman Academy. So, Bob, what do you think? Marshall, you look at the schedule, uh, Bowman, they win, Cloverdale ain't that great, Cincinnati Hughes, don't know much yet about, but then Northwest and Short Ridge, you are, eh, whatever. Uh, last week, Central Hearted, they lost to them 46-8. Uh, I don't know much about Marshall, but I know Boot Grove has been putting together uh, a solid season. I think they lost to North Judson a couple weeks ago. A wake up call. I like the Wolves. They get it done at the Circle City or on Saturday afternoon. You know, I look at the last, now I'm going back, because they're like, like Bob said, we really don't know too much about Indianapolis Marshall here. I know it's their second year at the football, varsity football program. And I go back to look at last year, and I know Boot Grove, they took a tough loss to Marshall last year. And but Boone Grove is a much improved ball club this year, JT, but not that much better. Marshall gets the job done again. Don't forget, too, last year, I believe that was the first game they played without Cody Pointer a year ago, too. And I think the Wolves, I think you coached, uh, talked to Coach Tickle, they're a little bit more healthier this year. Well, I think you guys both make some good points. And uh, I'm, I'm going to agree with Joe here. I, I like Marshall at home. Tough road trip for Boone Grove. I know they've, uh, they've been putting up W's, and you can't ask for much more than that. Um, but I, I I do like uh, I like Marshall at home and uh, I like Marshall at home in this one. I it, it's, it's I hope we're wrong though. Hope we're wrong. Uh, yeah, I, th I wouldn't mind me wrong on that, but that's just my gut feeling. Moving on to Greater South Shore Conference action, Calumet, the Warriors, they're taking on Whiting, who's undefeated. Whiting, uh, you know, just every week they keep grinding out victories. Uh, the, is this team primed for another feed of season, Bob? It looks like it. Calumet's been shut out two of the last three weeks. Last week, Blake by Bishop Null, 24 to nothing. Calumet at 2 and 4. Losses to River Forest Lake Station and the aforementioned Bishop Null Warriors. I look for Gang Green, the green and silver, to take care of business at Ray Gallagher. All night long, Whiting. Game's over at half, JT. What do you think? Wow! Game's over at halftime. We can go home. Yes. Go home and get your popcorn. Yeah. Go home and uh, tune in to Mid American Broadcasting and listen to us fine gentlemen on the air. All right. There are I, no I, gentlemen I, on Mid American <laughs> Broadcast. Well, maybe Tip Golf if he's out there. But. Yeah, you guys are right. Uh, Whiting Oilers, big. How about this? Delphi, the Oracles. They're taking on Rensselaer this week. And I told you guys the Oracles were going to beat Gavitt. Nobody believed me. Yeah, but it was a battle, though. It was only a 12-6 game. They came into Hammond and they said, for, forget what all the critics are saying. We're going to prove everybody wrong and get the job done. Are you going to pick up this week? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good bet. Bombers are going to drop some bombs on this horrible football team. It's going to be bad. Are you saying it's not going to be quite enlightening this week in uh, Jasper County? No, it's not. Okay. 
Yeah, Red Slayer. Uh, you, Jill, they, they, you know, even though it was a loss last week for uh, Chris Beach Ball Club, to hold that high power West Lafayette team to 20 points says a lot about that team, and I think it might be a bit of a wake up call for the northern half of 2A. Absolutely. I was shocked that they kept it that close. They were leading in the second half. I, I'm glad to see it. I, I mean, you never, never ever bet against a, uh, a Meeks coach ball club. And uh, he's going to get some revenge on that pick from me earlier when I picked against the Oracles. <laughs> Bombers all day. Yep, uh, all right. That means I'm not back dead bomb tonight, folks. Three bombers. All right, how about this? Uh, Lou Wallace. Joe, they beat Roosevelt last week, and they beat them pretty good. And yeah, we call it here. We call it right here. And uh, as some might call it, they're on a winning streak right now. And they're going to take that winning streak to East Chicago, where they're going to take on a battered Cardinal squad who lost to Morton last week. Are they vulnerable right now, Bob? Who? East Chicago. Well, every football team's vulnerable, but they're not going to be vulnerable this week. Joe? Oh, they're going to take some uh, frustration out on the Hornets from last week. Give me the Cardinals, baby. Lou Wallace played East Chicago this week, West Side, and then Fort Wade South. By the way, we didn't talk about that on our regular part of the show. about the big, Everybody with the love and harmony going on last week with these everybody writing Laporte, the big fight that happened down in Indianapolis between oh, Fort Wade South that. and Indy Tech. In case you didn't hear the game. Did not hear about they, it. They, basically what happened, the game was called, there was a late hit out of bounds, there was some separation, and then basically an assistant coach either shoved the player or threw a punch at another coach. Wow. Basically what happened, the two head coaches are suspended for this week. The assistant coaches in question for each are suspended the rest of the year, and players are suspended. They have to take sportsmanship courses before the playoffs to be eligible for the playoffs, and teams are placed on probation to the end of 2014. Wow. An assistant coach throws a punch. Yeah. Or pushes. That's that's totally out of line there. And you're, <laughs> you're, you're a grown man. Three, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> wow. Wow. That is, that is crazy to hear that. All right, Jake, what do we got coming up next all here? All right. So we got three Cardinals here. We're, we're all taking East Chicago. This is this game could be competitive. Griffith and Highland. And it will is, be competitive. Highland has not scored yet in conference play, but the Panthers they're upset. They haven't. Uh, they've been giving up a lot of uh, high point totals, as as Bob had mentioned earlier in the show. The and only team to not score at least twenty seven points on this Griffith team is Wheeler. But they gave up twenty seven to Morton, fifty six to Hover, forty five to Lowell, thirty nine to KV last week, thirty eight to Munster. Wow. That's a lot of high point totals. And Griffith lost to Highland last year in the first round of the sectional where Justin Green did score three touchdowns but got knocked out of the game in the fourth quarter. I predict this week Highland is going to score touchdowns and they're going to score a W. I like the Trojans to win this one like an 18-14 type game. Wow, Bob picking the Trojans. Joe... JT, I think what do you got for this? This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Justin Green has a, I wouldn't call it a breakout game, but he's going to have a game of the year Friday night, JT. I'm taking Justin Green and the Panthers. Well, we got a Panther and we got a Trojan. And you're you're a Panther who's picking a Trojan. Are you crazy? Yes. <laughs> I got to take the Panthers. I, I got to think Griffith's going to be able to uh, hold down Highlands. Uh, Highland, just by far, just... The, the, um, they have the least amount of offensive talent of any other team in the NCC. There's a reason they haven't scored in conference play yet. And i, I got to think, Griffith, if, if they're going to have a game where they can hold somebody down, it's this game. And I think their offense with, with Bukema and with Green can can do enough. You know, they, they, you, you keep mentioning that they haven't scored a point in conference play. Their three conference losses are Munster, Lowell, and Andrew. Probably the three best defensive teams in the conference. I mean, they're, those defenses are nothing to sneeze at. Right, but I mean, you usually see maybe six points or you know one touchdown, something. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm just it's just score against the JV team. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just shocking that they have not scored yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're going to score. I, I do think they will score, but I think Griffith um, is is going to be able to get get a click in an offense. Um, Hammond on the road taking on Lowell. This is you know. Uh, you want to talk about you know teams have been plagued by injuries and, and whatnot. Hammond is definitely yeah. a candidate uh, for that. They're, they're still without Eric. Bodies they're and, still without Eric Schreiber Jr. who might be done for the year. Yeah, and they, they tough loss to Boone Grove uh, last week. Watch some of that film, and uh, they have a new quarterback who's running a lot of uh, trying to run a lot of read option, and 
Um, just the offense just isn't nearly as effective, you know, without um, without Schreiber in there at quarterback. Um, I think this is this is going to be a, an ugly one at the Inferno. Very simple, Joe. George Fields plays for Lowell. He's going to have a field day. I like that. I like that analogy. I'm taking Lowell too as well, JT. I think it's going to be a three-way with you. All right. Yep. I'm I'm going with the the Devils in this one. This game. This you want to talk about competitive games? This could be the most competitive game of the week. Why do I sense the gripping of sarcasm here? Um, it's not sarcasm. It is not. It, it's legitimately real. Okay. Clark taking on Gavitt. You know how big of a deal this game is as far as you know, in, in the ham, you know, the ham, ham, as far as Hammond schools are concerned. This well, this game, is the beginning of Gavitt's conference season, guys. So this is a big game for the Gladiators. Yeah. Yeah. Clark hasn't won a game, but. Uh, Every, it seems like every time these, these uh, teams lock horns, it's always just a, kind of a knock, knock them down, slobber knocker, one score. It's, maybe Woodbar, for, game. it's Woodbar versus Robertsdale. Well, that's taken, Bob. Uh, last year, Gavin, 44 to 12. The year before that, 21 to 7. Clark's last win was in 2010, 42 to 7. I am going to keep my faith in the Gladiators, despite their loss to Delphi last week. I like the Glads in Woodbar. Yeah, JT. Clark, they, they hurt me. I thought they were going to get their first W against Bowman. I picked Clark to win. They not, tried. Not the, they did try, but not this week. Gavin. I got to agree with you guys. I got to Three for the Gladiators. Uh, but I think Clark keeps it close. I think it's a one-score game. I think Clark, I know they haven't won a game, but they've been close. Very, very close. They're going to put a scare into the Gladiators. But I, but I still do like Gavin to win this one. Just looking at it, the uh, Pioneers are only averaging 10 points a game, giving up 38. That's not good. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'm, He's I'm, not the best color man in the league for nothing, folks. <laughs> hey, Bob, you like fireworks? I love fireworks. I just don't like handling them anymore. My, my version of handling fireworks, guys, I just get my party poppers and just do the confetti thing. If you want to see some fireworks, go to West Side this Friday night. They're going to take on the Morton Governors. And they're going to put on an offensive show. Well, I don't know. They, they, this is probably going to be the best defense West Side's face all year, good Joe. I mean, that morning defense has been nasty. Look what they did to Martavius Carter last week. They held him to under 30 yards. Which is quite impressive. But can Morton shut down the, the Johnson duel at receiver for West If we're West talking Side. about shutting down like holding up the 21 points, yes. I think so. I think Morton's actually... Um, you know, West Side's been playing very well, but you look at how this Morton team has been playing, the most points they've given up in a game all year is 14. They're giving up 8.3 points a game. I, mean, I think offensively they're still not where they want to be. I think they are going to contain John May Johnson, uh, the other Johnsons as well. I mean, West Side's going to probably put the most points anybody's put on Morton, but that means it's going to be about 20, 21 points. But the West Side defense, I think is going to be the perfect elixir for Roy Richards' offense this week. I think I can see this being a 42-21 type game. You know, you may be right, but you know what? I'm going with the upset special here. Uh -oh. JT. You know, I'm 3 for 3, I call them my upsets. Or 2 for 2, I believe, yeah. This is going to be, I'm trying for 3 for 3. I know the West Side Cougars are going to get it done for me, JT. The Johnson Cousins, they're going to go off. A big day. West Side's going to win a tight one. Look, in 50-something. Oh, 50 boy. Oh, boy. You know, the governor's going to be watching that. They're like... We're going to stick it to Joe's face for that. Yeah, they tried to do that to me after uh, the Munster weekend. Uh, oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> well. And I, I picked him to win that week. Yeah, yeah. I, I still think Wharton's going to win this game. Um, I, I think I think Bob's right as far as, I mean, they're going to give up. Some, they're not going to completely shut down West Side. It's, it's almost impossible to shut down those two. You got 2D1 caliber players on the outside. It's it's. I mean, nobody's been able to, to, to contain those guys. I mean, West Side still put 28 points on Ed Gray. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, they're going to they're gonna score some points. But I do think this will be a breakout game for Morton. Uh, just, just because I know when West Side has faced good offensive teams, you know, like Hobart and Dran, those teams scored early and off, and they, and they basically dictated, um, they dictated tempo, and they, they pretty much had their way up and down the field. I think Morton's going to be the same way. There's only been two games this year the Governors have scored over 27 points. They scored 58 in Clark and 45 on Hammond. Well, I think I think they're definitely going to get over 30. They might get in the 40-point range. 
Uh, I'm still t I'm still going to take Morton in this ball game. And here here's an interesting matchup here, especially when it comes to the Greater South Shore Conference. And this league has been unpredictable at times. There's been a lot of except at the top, except for the one team, except for Whiting. All these other teams, I, I think, could beat each other. I mean, I think legitimately. From two to what is it? Seven teams. Seven teams. Two to eight. Two to eight. Next year will be ten. Okay, from two to eight, I think you know. Just wait till anybody hey, could be anybody. Just wait till next year when Hanover and Boone come into GSSC. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, both these teams are three and one. Bishop no in the conference. Bishop Nolan River Forest. The game is at River Forest. It's homecoming for RF. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a big uh, deal at Ray Madden Field Friday. Yeah. Night. You know, Bishop Nola. Uh, Won this matchup last year, but uh, River Forest, you got to think they're they're going to be pretty upset after that game against Wheeler. We all, I think, we all picked River Forest to win that game. Mm -hmm. It was, it was close. competitive ever. I believe it yeah. came out of turnovers, if I recall. So yeah, so I think the real question is, you know, can can they clean things up this week and and, and win on their homecoming? This is going to be a really tough game, and I think this is going to be a real close game. This could be a game that comes down to the wire. Joe, what are your thoughts? You know, in JT, I picked River Forest last week. You know, they let me down. They didn't win. But, you know, I'm going to jump back on the Ingots jam, the bandwagon. I like the run game of the Ingots. Ingots and a nail-biter. It's been four years since River Forest has notched a W over uh, Bishop Dull. And there's a lot of distractions, obviously, with homecoming as players. A lot of things mm -hmm. going on. I just think Bishop Bowl has a little bit more talent offensively. They hung tough with uh, Whitey for about a half, and I just think that's going to be a little bit of a difference, and they maybe catch a little bit of a not maybe we're forced. I'm not saying lack of focus, maybe not as focused with all the happenings going on. I think in a squeaker, Bishop Bowl wins on the road. I was impressed with uh, with Bishop Knoll shutting out Kymet last week. Um, you know, this is a team, you know, as you mentioned, um, you know, really hung with Whiting. Um, but they also, you, I mean, it took them, you know, till you know, in the second half to really put Lake Station away. So um, they've been kind of an up and down team um, all season long. But I, I think I'm, I think I'm with you, Bob. I think I'm, I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to go with Bishop Noel. I think it's gonna be a close game, maybe in the teens or maybe low twenties. But I like. Uh, I like Bishop Noel to win this by one score. Here's another matchup. Uh, you know, we're we're talking about you know these independent schools. You know, Boone Grove. They're they're traveling to Indianapolis. We have an Indianapolis team, uh, Indianapolis Howell, traveling up to Gary. They're going to play Bowman Academy this week, and uh, Bowman's really been uh, kind of an up and down team all season long. Uh, Indianapolis Howell. Uh, the Howell Hornets. Yeah. What do, you, what, what, do you, what do you think about this matchup? This is kind of another, you know, <laughs> long travel. Long travel and... Well, let's bring up the uh, schedule for those T.C. Howe Academy Hornets. I actually have called a couple of Howe Hornet games uh, in the past. I know you guys are happy for me. Back in the old Payback Classic in the RCA, though. Uh, Joe was there. Yeah. I, I was there live. Oh, yeah? No. Mm. But I do believe I played a football game down at Howell Academy. Well, the uh, Hornets are having a 4-2 uh, season, including a 31-point win over the Lou Wallace Hornets, by the way. Wow. And, uh, well, I tell you this, there are two losses. They lost to Franklin in a 5 school. By the way, Howell's a 1-8 in school list. And they lost to Franklin 44-8, and they lost to Garrett Kaplan, who is usually pretty good. They only lost to them by 12 points. So that being said... Heading out the road to take on those Bowman Academy Eagles, I say the Hornets are going to sting the Eagles on Ouch. Friday night. And Ouch. usually that's what happens when you get stung by Hornets. Joe? You know what, Bob, this is one of your toss-up games here. I haven't got a quarter on me, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick with Oh, the... wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. I think wait Bob might have something. We have? Did you say? Here, you hand it? Let me get in there. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Don't, I don't want any dudes getting into my pocket. All right, here we go. Heads Bowman, tails Howe. It's head. So I'm taking the Eagles, baby. Bowman. Oh, man. Oh, boy. I don't want the quarter. I don't need the quarter. I'm telling you right now, Howe gets it done on the road. I'll Not a cheese head, though. Not a cheese head. 
thought about it, but nah, I'll save it for something well, the, else. I just realized this quarter is older than all of us. You see, look at the year on that. 1967. That's a 1967 quarter. Wow. Wow. That, that's, right. a, that's an old quarter. Let's move into DAC, guys. <laughs> Let's start. Uh, Slicers haven't won a game all season long. Um, put up a tough, put up a good effort last week against Maryville. On the road again. This time they're playing at Crown Point. Crown Point. Homecoming over there. Yeah, okay. nice turnaround last week. Pretty impressive win over Valpo. Uh, does Laporte have a chance? You know, I, I know, I know there, you know, a lot of mixed emotions there. Do they, you know, what what are their chances on the road of uh, you know putting a scare into the Bulldogs? I like the salary kid at running back. He's a nice little running back, a junior. Uh, Laporte was down to their third, went down to their third string quarterback. Their starting quarterback left the game with an Achilles injury late in the first half. Their second string through one pass was intercepted. Near the end of the half, they put in a senior who wasn't on the depth chart and actually did a halfway decent job. So I don't know uh, what the situation is going to be for uh, Bob Schellinger to put in a quarterback this week. Crowd point bounced back, was able to put some points on the board. It would not shock me to see Laporte get into the win column. And I think a lot of people would love to see him get into the win column before the season is up. I just don't see it happy this week, Joe. Yeah, I don't think I like. I think Crown Point right now is starting to get Peterson more involved in the way they should get him to the outside. Peterson had a heavy, heck of a game, and I think they're going to continue that offensive power there. And uh, you know what? I like the dogs at home on homecoming. It's going to be a low-scoring game, like a 17-7 type game, but I like CP to win. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Um... I think I think Laporte's chance might come when they play Michigan City next week. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a realistic chance. Um, I think Crown Point's defense is still too too tough. Um, Laporte's going to struggle, especially you know they're they're playing with a third string quarterback him to go against that Crown Point defense. That's mm -hmm. that's not an easy chore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I ex I expect you know I expect for them to, you know try to feed Peterson the ball and, and get him going. And I, I like I like Crown Point to to get it done. Let's move back to the Greater South Shore Conference. The Wheeler Bearcats, they shocked all of us. They beat the Ingots last week, and now they got to play Lake Station. And Lake Station, you know, they've, they've been competitive in some games. They've, I think they've shown some improvement from a year ago. And, you know, with, with kind of Wheeler on, on the downside, uh, this, this could be a much more competitive matchup, Bob. Well, the thing that's hurt Lake Station all year has been turnovers. They, I think they're among the area's leaders as far as giving the ball up. And uh, obviously, you play the game, you turn the ball over, you put yourself, your chance is less than a victory. Wheeler, I think you're starting to see them down in the march here. I think they have a chance here if you look at the schedule the rest of the way. Lake Station... Bishopville and Calumet, they have a shot to get a 5-4 regular season, which after the start they had at 0-3 oh, and, and their loss a couple weeks ago to South Central, for, I think for Tony Klimczak, they would be ecstatic to get into the sectional of 5-4. and four. I like Wheeler this week. I agree with you 100%, JT. Give me the Bearcats. All right, that, that makes three of us. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys as well. But we'll see if Wheeler can you know, pick up some steam here. Maryville and Valparaiso. Valpo... Uh, Fell to Crown Point. If they would have won that game, they still would have been undefeated. Uh, was this a big three game or not? Uh, Maryville Valpo. Oh, yeah. It's a. Uh oh. It's one of the big three. Jake. Time out. Let's have a retake. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about that game yet. I was just messing with you guys. Yeah, well. But so if you see the edit on the video, now you know why. There's no edit. I'm just going to leave it in. There you go. It was, it was a He's... planned It was a planned error. Okay, there will be a test on this in five minutes. Portage, what a, what an impressive two weeks they've had. They are now three and three. They are looking to get above five hundred, and they are taking on a Michigan City team that has really struggled the last few weeks. They had a promising start to the season, but ever since giving up that that seventeen point uh, lead to Chesterton, they have not been the same. Bob. Can Michigan City do anything to turn things around? They got week? the points. You know, they did something that hadn't been done in, uh, in five weeks last week. They scored a touchdown at Lake Central defense. They had a 10-2 lead. Portage is riding the momentum. Can Michigan City get it done, Joe? 
heavy Mr. Football there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Guess what? Or bang it on there. Power play of the week. The Tribe gets the 4-3 with a win over the Wolves. Bob's on the bandwagon. The power play of the week. Yeah, JT, this Portage defense is playing its best football so far of the year. They switch over. They're running strictly now. It looks like a 3-4. Uh, the Chandler brothers on the outside are dominating. The defensive front is just winning at the line of scrimmage. Portage wins this game big, JT. By the way, our good friend Tommy Boy is happy. His grandson, uh, Buck, is now dressing on uh, the Michigan City varsity as a freshman. Good for him. Congratulations. That's great. Yeah, that's he's impressive to do as a freshman. Yeah, he's been on those uh, pop order teams that went to the national championship game, won a national title. So, good to see. Well, I, I'm ditto to what you guys said. Uh, Portage. Uh, their offense has has really you know made some strides the last couple of weeks. Their defense uh, has been outstanding. You know, creating turnovers, create, and they're you know scoring off of those turnovers. Michigan City has really struggled, you know, on both sides of the ball the last few weeks, and I think Porter's going to take advantage of that. It's at Ames Field, but um, you know it's one of those matchups. You know, Portage always beats Michigan City. It's 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 you know every year. I think 2005, I think, was the only time since Michigan City combined their two high schools that they beat Portage in football. Uh, it's just one of those games that Portage always always wins. I, I still like, I like Portage on the road uh, big in this one. Wenamac, they're undefeated. How well, about they, their game last they, week? They made a statement, didn't they? 51 oh. to nothing over West Central. I don't think anyone saw that coming. That big, I think a lot of people pick Wenamac to win, but not by that much. Well, that means the last two games for Winnipeg over West Central, they have outscored the Trojans 100 to 13. Wow. That's a lot of points. Yes, it is. Uh, are they the team to beat up North in Class 1A? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think they take it all the way this year. I don't know. Certain team in Sheridan might disagree. Who knows? I don't know. But who, who's putting that out this week? Or is this a rivalry week? This is a rivalry week. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. oh that Knox? No. This is... You want to talk about some good old-fashioned hate here. This game right here. Winnipeg North Judson. Oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness. The cops are going to be busy in Stark County this week. They're going to make some tax, some, some tax money this week. Uh, no, it's... It's it's always a, a bloodbath, and and you want to, yeah you're absolutely right. These teams do not do not like each other. Look, very little respect between the two squads. Um, but the problem with North Jets, and they have the same problem that Hammond does. They just don't have enough bodies. And Winnipeg has been on a roll. They have dominated every game they've played this season. And I don't see it changing this week. North Judson really got whacked by KB uh, last Friday and. Uh, you're going to see more of the same. Uh, Winnipeg's starting quarterback did get hurt um, in, the, in the game against West Central. Winnipeg's given up five touchdowns in six games. That's impressive. They're that averaging 52 impressive. points a game as well. When you can win an average by an average score of 52 to 6, the, the Warriors are rolling. I'm telling you, I, 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 watch, I watch this team every week. I, and they, wow! I, I, I watched that. I watched. I watched that game at wow. West Central game. I, I was. I was amazed. I mean, they just. They completely dominated. West Central was a decent passing offensive team, and and they. They get pressure so quickly, and they did a nice job of containing the option. I was really impressed with their defense, and offensively they've got this um, this fullback. You know they run you know like a double wing offense, and they got this kid at fullback. Uh, I think his name's Tyler. Uh, Klatschke, yeah. number th uh, 32. Oh my God, this dude is a beast at the 1A level. And I I'm was, just impressed you watch Winnipeg game, Phil. That's just impressive. They're, hey, they're, no, I, I, they're really good. I, I mean, I, I mean, I know that, but it's just, just this guy's dedicated, man. Well, absolutely. He's I try to do it at, you know. High school analyst right here, JT Hoyle, breaking right. down the Warriors. Yeah, and they, and they just do such a great job winning, winning the battle at the line of screw. But North Justin just doesn't have many bodies. And I, I like Winnipeg to, to put a pounding on, on North Judson this week. Yeah, I think it's going to be a repeat of last week for uh, Winnipeg, 55 nothing or something like, somewhere around that score. Uh, ditto. All right. Now let's move to the big three. All right. Here we go. We'll start in the DAC. The Marigold Pirates, they are 5-1, and one and they are really, I mean, they've been very, very impressive in conference play so far. Yes, they have been. And... Playing Valparaiso, you know, they, they, who had been playing well in the conference, and 
last week, uh, you know, Crown Point probably had their, their probably their best game of the season against the Vikings. That might have been the widest margin in quite some time in the county seat game. If you think about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to that being typically a low scoring. Yeah. Usually, you know, the slobber knocker. Yeah. Um, what are the? I mean, with this game being at Viking Field and Maryville, just you know, they really haven't been challenged except for Crown Point gave them a pretty pretty tough game. But they've. It seems like every week, I think DJ Wilkins is getting a lot more confidence, and their defense has been outstanding. Um, it's you know. You look at how good they were last season. I mean, this year, you know, their defense seems to be a lot better than it was last year, and their offense is starting to pick up the slack too. So, last week against Laporte, it was basically an offense, a two-man game with DJ Wilkins and uh, Brian Isabel. They combined for I think 200 yards, three touchdowns. Wilkins had the three rushing touchdowns, threw a fourth touchdown. The other touchdown was in the fourth quarter on a special teams play on a punt return for touchdown. Laporte, in some respect, or Valpo reminds me of Laporte, where they have a decent quarterback in David Hittiger, but I don't know if they have the size and the speed of that. I mean, Laporte played their hearts out with the events of last week, but they just couldn't match up with variable size and in their speed department, too, as well. They shot to the, the gaps very well. They did a nice job containing uh, Charles Sauter, held him over under four yards of carry last week. Uh, Apple's offense has st struggled at times this year. I think David Hittiger had his worst game of the year last week. I just look for Maryville. This might be one of those games, too. They might have a breakout game this week at Viking Field. Apple's been up and down, but I see. I just I don't see this game being close at all. I like Maryville big. Oh, I agree with you. I believe Maryville has finally got a great recipe for offense. You want to keep the ball on the ground. DJ Wilkins is most effective running that you know running the read option and then just giving the ball to. Brian Isabel, I believe that's the best offense for Maryville. If you could limit the passes of DJ Wilkins, I think I believe that's a good thing. And uh, use his feet to get the W, and I believe Maryville does just that. You're going to see uh, a lot of carries with Wilkins and Isabel again. Probably 250, 300 yards on the ground. I like, I like Maryville. Well, Maryville's always predicated on the big play. They try to score quick, they score big and fast. They kind of, you know, didn't really need to do that last week. I think you're going to see him go back in the air a little bit this week and get Mr. Robinson and a, a company going. Tyree Fuller sometimes flies in at wild card, but he is a great playmaker on offense for Zach Wells. Yeah, well, you know, you know Rob Arezzo, you want to talk about big plays. They give up a lot of big plays. Uh, Tristan Peterson on the ground last week. And, you know, I, just, I got to think Brian Isabel's looking at that in the paper and saying, you know what? That's going to be me this week. Let's and not forget this game last year. 66 to 41 with 1,200 yards of offense. I don't think we're going to see 1,200 yards of offense. No. But I do that was a fun game to do, though. I'll tell you that. But I, th I do agree with you. I think we're going to see a lot of points on the board for Maryville, and I like the Pirates big over the Vikings. Let's move on to the second game. Kankakee Valley, they're much improved. And you guys will be there. Well, I don't know I'll be there. I, I don't know if Joe. Joe might be uh, at Michigan City. Uh, uh, oh, following the... Uh, might be covering the Indians there. Might be, yeah. You know, there's a correspondent for us. <laughs> An unpaid correspondent, but... Anyway, we're talking about an improved KB Ball Club. They're now 3-3. Three and three. They've been playing outstanding football last two weeks. They found this young man, this parted kid at running back. He, he's a load. Yeah. I'm, he is a load. I mean, he, 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 he's almost like, uh, you know, like, like a Tyler Berkey kind of, you know, he, he, he's, he's built, he's powerful, he runs through people, and he's the perfect kind of back you want in this, in this offensive system. So he's the, he's the right fit for, for, what, for what they do offensively. And, you know, they're taking on an Andrean team that, you know, couldn't be flying any higher right now. 42-0 uh, went over Highland last week. Really, uh, Maryville is the only team that's really you know, given them a challenge so far. They've really had every, every other team, you know, every other game has been at least two touchdowns or more. Um, and I, I posted this question on my page, could this be a trap game for the 59ers? Because I think KV has really, you know, stepped up their game, you know, the last two or three weeks. Well, ever since they switched to that eight-man line that they broke out of the second half against... Homer, this is a KV team. They've been finding a way to move the ball very efficiently, just running that ball down people's throats. Bryce Stewart, I think, is passing it a little bit more, 
that he would like to. They're having a little bit more success in the game, but with Parton and Higgins, it's a nice one-two punch in the backfield for the crew. You have to wonder if how this team would really look if they had a healthy Johnny Williams as part of that mix as well. Yeah, I, look how teams are really struggling right now to stop with that eight-man front that KD's busted out. And I tell you, and that's great for the defense, JT. That Brad Stewart, I think it's the, that for offense complements his defense. And I, I hate betting against a Brad Stewart defense, but Andrean to Andrean, JT. I think Andrean wins this one in a very tight game. KD keeps this one uh, close with the 59. I think it's going to be an interesting game. I think it might be Andrean's homecoming as well. But... Uh, you know, KB might keep it close, but I see Andre and pulling away in the second half. And last night, check, uh, there's a certain Matt DeSilver still wearing red and gold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's <laughs> He's pretty good. That's definitely uh, going to be an issue. And, yeah, I think I think KB's recipe to try to win this game is to hold the ball as long as they can on offense. You know, the best way to stop the other team's offense is to keep your offense on the field as long as possible. And if KB can, can milk some, you know, long, time-consuming drives – just, you know, continually pounding the football. Um, I think they're going to have, I mean, I think it's going to give them a chance. I think they're going to stay close. I think, uh, but their problem, their problem is going to be, you know, holding down and drains big play offense. You know, can they, can they keep everything in front of them and not give up a big play? That's what everyone, every team that plays and drains a really difficult time not giving up big plays. And if, if K, I think KB is going to have to really stack the box to try to at least eliminate um, the threat of the option and, and maybe just force and drain to be try to be one dimensional throwing the ball. They can still win that way. I think their offense is just too good, and I think KB is going to have a hard time getting stops themselves on defense. I, I see and drain still putting up probably 35, maybe 40 points, and, and winning this one. I'd say by a couple of touchdowns. 35-14 Niners. Game of the week time, Bob. Uh, it's your time to shine once again. 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 It won't be next week, I'll tell you that. It won't? Uh, well, it won't be for me next week, I'll tell you that right now. Oh, we'll right. talk about that later. Okay. Well, uh, we got, we got maybe, maybe the most, you know, from last year or this year, might be the most improved team in the area in the Munster Mustangs. Sitting at 4-2 and two right now. They only won two games all season last year. And, and they've been very impressed, especially on defense. Taking on a Hobart team, they, they, they're on a two-game skid. The Brickies are desperate to get back into the win column. Uh, playing at home once again. Hobart's had a lot of home games this year. Yeah, they had an extra one uh, thanks to Mother Nature. So yeah. uh, I think the athletic department's not going to be complaining there. But, uh, well, you look at it. Buster, in their two losses, has given up 76 points. In their two losses, in their four wins, they've given up 28 points. Including a pair of shoutouts over Highland and Morton. Their losses are to Chesterton and and Drake, where back this summer had nearly 500 yards of offense. Is this a video game, Bob? If Matt DeSilver's on the field, yes. But Matt DeSilver's not going to be on the field at the break on Friday night. And I think you talk to the Hobart staff, they're probably glad. They're also probably glad that they're not going to be seeing uh, Mr. Fields this week. But the big question mark, I think, in this game... Uh, the, uh, the status of what Seth Gutwey, he's been out the last couple of weeks. The, 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 you look at Munster over the years, they've had some stout running backs over the years, but Leroy Mars has, he loves a running back by committee. He loves to spread the ball around. He's got usually every year about eight, nine guys who can carry the ball in a game. He keeps them fresh that way. Joe Jubinville stepped in, done a nice job running that offense, considering he, I think he hasn't played since his freshman year, so he stepped in. As a starting quarterback, as a senior now, has done a really nice job. He's a very good athlete. He's committed to play baseball in Northern Illinois. Uh, of course, his uh, old man, uh, uh, I remember seeing him play in the 90s at Bishop Mill, too. But, uh, and then you got the uh, Homer Brickies, who defensively, they've gotten better the last couple of weeks, but they've slowed down offensively. People are starting to key in on uh, Noah Smith a little bit. Great Devereaux is a heck of a playmaker. This is a coin flip game, I think. All right, Bob, I can't wait to see this flip. Oh. But I don't know if I'm going to flip, though. I mean, oh. it's a coin flip game, you can whatever, but something tells me right now, if Gutwein plays, even if he don't play, I just think Munster's got a couple more playmakers offensively and defensively, they're better than Homer. I see this being another 21-20 type game. I like the Mustangs on the road. You know, Bob, I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. 
I, oh. I, I do. I like I like Bob's pick here. Munster's. I think they're the hotter team right now. JT, Hobart. They're coming off two big losses. That's got to drain a team emotionally, especially against Lowell. That's a, somewhat of a rivalry game. I, th I mean, Munster comes in and they're going to get the W against the Brits. All right. Here's the deal. There's a lot of people out there that think I hate Hobart football. We know you do. I I know I a few. I don't hate I don't hate the Brickies. They're not my favorite team. Okay, but the true south. Uh oh. <laughs> they're not my favorite team. I don't hate the Brickies, but I will say this: six weeks, I have correctly picked every single Hobart game thus far this season, and I'm telling you right now. Holbert will win this game. They're not going to fall. They're not going to lose three games in a row. I I, I do think that uh, they're saying the seniors are going to go out a winner on senior day. I think so. I think so. And I like uh, the passing game is what's going to have to get this done. The right arm of Andrew Barris is what's going to win this game for Holbert. His ability to hit Devereaux and Boken. Yep. Um, There's one person that they've missed the last couple of weeks in well, the offensive game. They're going to have to. They're going to have to get him him more involved. I think Munster's going to do a pretty decent job of slowing down the run, but it's going to be the passing game of the Brickies. They're going to clean up, you know, the, um, the penalties, some of the, you know, the sloppy play, you know, getting all these long third and long situations. It's going to be the passing game that wins this for Hobart, and I think that their defense is good enough now that they can contain Munster's ground and pound attack. I think they can. I think like a. 21 to 14 type game. I like Hobart to win this one at home. I don't think they're going to drop three straight. So I will pick Hobart to win this game. And I got to say something. I made a mistake. I made an error. You you got me. What's that? I forgot one game. Really? Yeah. It wasn't a, it wasn't in the big three. It was a game that was right before the big three. I forgot. We got to talk about it real quick. Uh oh. It's another DAC game. Oh. Lake Central. Remember the Lake Central and Chesterton. Lake Central and Chesterton. I think that should have been one of the big three. It well, okay, it's a big four this week. It's, it's the, the big, big four. four. It's the big four. One, two, three, big four. four. All right. Big four. Lake Central for and Chesterton. For one week only. And I'll tell you, yeah. <laughs> for for you know, limited time. Next right week it's going to be the Fantastic Five. Yes. Well, you know, we're in a whole lot of you know great matchups. This this could potentially be a good matchup. We did this game a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, we did. Ago. We did this game two years ago. It was a close game until David Yancey went nuts. Yeah, fourth quarter, he just took took over the game. But Chesterton definitely made it interesting for a while. And I think it was Colt Hill's first start of his career that night too, if I recall. A yeah, couple years ago, yeah, he, he yeah. played and uh, you know, he, he did some nice things. I tell you what, uh, Chesterton, they're, they're they got to be desperate right now. You think about it. Two losses in a row, the Portage and the Valpo. I mean, two big rivals taking on Lake Central. This is a team that, you know, offensively, you know, they're not exactly lighting up the scoreboard. They're just under 20 points a game. Yeah. that's. But they're giving up 8.7. And they've given up uh, two touchdowns in the last five weeks. If you're, if you're the Trojans, you got to think there's got to be some, there, there's got to be hope. Or, you know, Lake Central is not. It's not like they're scoring 30, 35 points a game. Uh, this this game could be within reach for the Trojans, um, especially you know playing at home. I don't know if it's their homecoming or not. It might be, but uh, Bob, what 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 do you think here? I mean, the which Chester the team's going to show up? Is it the one that you, you, we talked about? When Chester had their big comeback, Joe against Michigan State, they're down 31-14 in the fourth quarter, and they pulled that one out of the fire. Two weeks ago, they had that Valpo game under wraps. I mean, you know, 14-7, you know, still a competitive game, but they outdid everything but a couple key turnovers. Valpo came back to get that win on the road last week. For some reason, they just didn't have it on Portage. Could that fourth quarter against Valpo be to do the same thing to Chester what that game the Michigan City did to them? It's quite possible, but I tell you, the one thing that really hurts Chester's and JT is the front four. I, what I noticed when I was watching the game against Portage, they had absolutely no push whatsoever against that Portage young offensive line. And the offense, uh, Cole Teal is really the only, well, besides for they got beaks, but I believe Teal is their biggest game, uh, you know, playmaker there on offense. And they got a receiver out there who's actually pretty good. They need to get him more involved. 
Chesterton faces too many third and longs. I, that's what I've noticed th throughout their whole year. A lot of third and long uh, on offense. I just like I like the like central defense to win this game. I think Scott has a, a big game on the ground for the Indians. Yeah, last week, you know, last week really, really told me all I needed to know about Chesterton. Um, Lake Central's been kind of living and dying on their, on their running game. Um, Hashim Sims ran for four touchdowns on this Trojan defense, and Porter's just absolutely dominated them up front. I look for Lake Central to do the same, and I was really impressed. You know, with, we talked about it on the way over here. This Portage's ability to um, stretch out these option plays, and uh, I think Lake Central can do the same thing. I think. You're going to kind of see deja vu all over again with Chesterton. Um, their offense is going to really, really struggle to move the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a shutout for Lake Central. In fact, it's a lock. Uh-oh. What? I feel so confident. I'm going to put my cheese up for grabs right now. I'm going against the cheese. I'm well, it looks like you're not going to be going to Chesterton any time soon. Probably not. Bob, they could, Lake Central could put you at quarterback and they would still... Win this ball game. I can't throw the ball three yards. You don't need to throw. You just got to be able to hand it off to Scott to win this game. Uh, you know, Lake Central is one of those teams. It's like the '63 Bears, where the offense or the defense would be on the sideline and they would yell, "Hold them, offense!" That's pretty much how it is right now. Lake Central just finds a way to score enough points to get by. I, I see this being like a 14-7 type game. I like the Indians on the road. I mean, that defense is magnificent. The only thing for Lake Central, Joe. Maryville Lubes next week, and we all know how high school kids can be, how hard it is to not look ahead. Oh, that's true. That's true. And yeah, they see I got the cheese on the line. They're going to be like, hey, we're going we're gonna to go extra harder. We're going we're gonna to play extra harder. Robinson's that. in the locker room. Listen, JT Hoyle has put the cheese on the line for us. We can't let him down. Let's go out there and shut these guys out. Mr. Robinson, please hurry to West Lafayette. You are needed desperately. <laughs> I can, I can imagine that conversation. <laughs> Pre-game speech in the locker room. Might be St. Germain giving that speech. I don't know. Like, like Ray Lewis saying. We like, got to win for the cheese. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our show for this week. Bob and Joe pointing to the wrong whatever <laughs> on JT. That's our that's Reading man. Sports Desk part of the show. Bob, you take it away. All right. We'll be back to wrap up uh, MAB Weekly, the big show after this on Mid-America Broadcasting. Dot, dot. Ha, 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 ha.